Okay, well, let's, let's keep going. Let's go a bit further, shall we? Let's add a mass and a spring. So now in our graph, we've extended our graph, we've got five nodes, one, two, three, four, and we've got four springs, four edges, A, B, C, D, and um, we're going to do the same thing as we did before. Okay, it's just another mass with another spring. So again, what we're going to do is, remember, um, in principle, we've got this vector of displacements, which will now be phi one, phi two, phi three, phi four, it's five dimensional. We're going to set uh, mass 1, mass 2, mass 3 to be 1, all of the spring constants to be unity. Um, and we're going to fix node 1 and 4, which are the walls. We're not going to let those move. All right, so it's exactly the same formulation as before, but everything's a bit bigger. There's one more mass. There's one more um, one more spring. Now we know what the equation is here and what we're going to do is we're going to introduce those hatted variables before. Instead of the full vector of external forces I'm just going to look at the external forces on nodes 1, 2 and 3 and then I'm going to define x hat to be just the displacements of nodes 1, 2 and 3, masses 1, 2 and 3 and then um, what I'm going to end up solving is um, a, 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 of course, the, the full equation would be F minus the full Laplacian, weighted Laplacian, times X is equal to um, minus omega squared X. Okay, that right hand side is, of course, the second derivative of the X, but I'm assuming the same form of solution as before. So I'm assuming that X is equal to X naught e to the I omega t, just as I did before. I'm skipping a lot of steps now because this is very similar formulation to what I just did, just with one more mass, one more edge. Okay, uh, but of course the reduced system, so we're now gonna have free oscillations again. Free oscillations. So that means that F hat is zero. And let's just write down the full Laplacian, okay? And of course, remember, we've got these nodes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And uh, let's just go through and form the full Laplacian. Uh, all the edge, con edge spring constants are 1. So we've got um, 1 there with a minus 1, 0, 0, 0. We've got um, a 2 there with a minus 1, minus 1, 0, 0. Uh, edge 2, uh, mass 2 has 2, minus 1, minus 1, but it's not connected to 4, 0. Mass 3 has a 2 uh, with uh, connections there. And then at this last one, we've got one connection connected to 3, but no zeros, okay? But zeros in the rest of the positions. Now, um, we want our reduced system. Okay, we want our reduced system. And remember what we do, because we've grounded these nodes, we end up just introduce, thinking about this matrix, which is K hat. So what we end up doing then is we get rid of that because it's free oscillations. And then this becomes K hat X hat is equal to lambda X hat. Okay, where lambda again is the omega squared. I've skipped a couple of steps there, but they were all done in the last couple of lectures, albeit in a slightly smaller system. Okay, well, uh, let me um, clear that. And, well, let me not clear it yet. Let me just look at what my matrix is. My K hat is the thing I've got to do now. And you can see, of course, I've got this eigenvalue problem now for K hat. That's what I've reduced this problem to. Okay. Well, let's just look at what our k hat is, and uh, it's 2 minus 1, 0, minus 1, 2, minus 1, 0, minus 1, 2. I can remember that. Let me um, use another screen now and write that down. So we've reduced to the eigenvalue problem as follows. Uh, 2 minus 1, 0, minus 1, 2, minus 1, 0, minus 1, 2 times um, x1, x2, x3, those are my uh, displacements, and then I want x1, x2, x3. This is my eigenvalue problem. So my characteristic equation then is now, I want the determinant of 2 minus lambda minus 1, 0, minus 1, 2 minus lambda, 
minus 1, and 0 minus 1 to minus lambda to be equal to 0. Okay, um, and I think that's equivalent to 2 minus lambda times the subdeterminant 2 minus 1 squared minus 1, and then it's, I have to have a minus sign, remember, when I take a determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix for this kind of cofactor. So I end up with plus, and then I think it's, uh, if I sort the sign, it's lambda minus 2, that's it. Okay, and that's got to be equal to 0. So it looks like I need 2 minus lambda, and isn't it 2 minus lambda squared minus 1, minus 1. Okay. So it looks like my roots are, I can obviously have lambda is equal to 2, or I can have 2 minus lambda is equal to plus or minus root 2, which is equivalent to lambda is equal to 2 plus or minus root 2. So there, my friends, are my three eigenvalues in this case. Okay? So those will give me the, the three eigenvalues that I'm looking for in this case. And I'm not going to go through the calculations now, it's a standard calculation, but um, the eigenvector here is, uh, is 1, 0, minus 1, and I can have a C1 in front of that. So, um, so let, me, let, me, let me do the following thing. I can write down then my general solution because it will be x is real part of C1, and then this corresponds to root 2, i root 2t, because omega will be the square root of lambda. Okay, and then I can take a C2, and trust me, you can work this out. The, uh, this is the eigenvector corresponding to 2 lambda be, being 2 plus root 2. So this is e to the i root of 2 plus root 2, t. And then there's one final uh, term, it's 1 root 2, 1. And I think that's the eigenvector corresponding to... Okay, there's an i there. Okay, it's the eigenvector uh, corresponding to um, lambda being 2 minus root 2. So again, look at that. I've got c1, c2, c3 being uh, complex valued constants. So there are six real parameters uh, in this general solution, and they would be set again by initial conditions. Okay, but notice the key point is here, most of this is just calculations. The key point is that it reduces, the dynamical problem reduces to finding the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this particular matrix, uh, k hat. Okay. You can see that I can carry on in this way, adding more masses and edges, uh, springs, uh, between these two walls. Okay, um, And we're going to explore what happens if you do that. We're going to try to formulate what happens if you keep adding masses. So I'm going to consider soon the case of n masses between these walls um, and see what happens.